Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to the start of a new campaign in Hearts of Iron 4 using the mod Darkest Hour, the open beta version of Darkest Hour, which we're playing as America to see what it is like. Well, that is kind of weird. Um, but uh, yeah, and also like this, like I said, it's an open beta, not everything's going to work perfectly. So we'll see what happens, but we're going to begin with uh, prepare to move the U.S. Department of War. Oh, there's nothing to read here. U.S. Department of War. So, this is still in beta, like I said. It gets more command, but that's kind of nice. Um, so, it's 1933. Not 36, but 1933. And we're playing as America just to see what happens. Uh, looks like we can't do any focuses now. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, but apparently this mod, Darkest Tower. It's a total overhall mod for Hearts of Iron 4, of course. It's 33. See the rise of a certain dude. Fight the Great Depression. And prepare your nation for the upcoming storm that will shadow Europe and the world. According to the Steam page, which is linked in the, as in the first description in down below. I'm going to try to play historically, because it's on historical, but I'm probably going to screw it up. Party in Miami. Now, don't you worry, the president-elect holds a handful of reporters. A smile crossing his face, I'll be coming back. You all have to put up with me for at least another four years, the assembled onlookers laugh. Vincent Astor's yacht, the Nurmahal, awaited her passenger in the background, Miami's winter sun, reflecting off her white hull. In a few minutes, Roosevelt would board along with a small group of personal friends and political allies, her opulence disgusted him. The anarchist surged towards the front of the crowd, his hidden hand uh, tracing the machine steel contours of the $8 revolver. Wow, $8 revolver. As the crowd began to disperse, Roosevelt turned to Chicago Mayor Tony Cermak, ready to depart. Too many people are starving, five deafening gunshots rang out, transforming the small talking crowd into a screeching mob. Four bullets flew wildly into the horde, striking three fleeing Miamians. A security guard, the last shot, however, as if the, aware of the government's intent, flew straight for the president's uh, car and it's Cermak in the stomach. Uh, Roosevelt nearly. Narrowly avoids assassination, Chicago Mayor shot. Oh, whoa. Path of Events is unfinished as a version 1 and will not unlock any content. President elect Franklin Roosevelt killed in Miami. Well, we got to go with that one. Oh, we're going to read this one. Please go ahead. Yeah. A tragedy by the catastrophe has been averted. Oh, wow. So, yeah, this is World 93.3, which is weird to see play as. Oh, man. China's a little different, isn't it? And they have these little white boxes. That, which is, not everything's done yet. Wow. Zing Zhuang. This is weird to look at, man. I like it, though. And Germany, I guess it's called the German Reich for now, but it's still the Weimar Republic. And then, oh, look at this guy. Oh, well, maybe not. Never mind. Oh. Well, they've treated Versailles. Secret rearmament. They have destroyed German spirit, which sucks. FDR inaugurated. There we go. If you're wondering about that, please go right ahead. Weimar era, of course. And, of course, a slight depression. God bless America. Oh, is that... Oh, look at this. He's got a hat! John, John Hans Gardner. Look at that. So, let's begin with Houdini in the house. Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt has been elected to the office of the presidency at the time of one of the greatest economic disasters or crises ever, the Great Depression, which promises to be the downfall of our nation if it is not dealt with properly. The new president has promised a new deal for the American people. A series of reforms that are implemented correctly could prove to be the miracle that many across the country have prayed for. Whether Roosevelt is a magician who can solve America's problems is yet to be seen, but a strong start in these first 100 days will be crucial if he's to gather the momentum needed to pursue some of his more radical ideas in the future and turn around this country in shambles. Also, uh, you know what, let's go read another one. The Good Neighbor? Oh, wait, not in the first hundred days. I guess we'll do this short of the banks. We're living in a hard, hard time. The Great Depression rages on. People are getting desperate. Banking has always been built on trust and guarantees, but right now they don't have either of that. As people rush to withdraw their deposits, and fear the banks may close, and in fact provoking serious cash shortages, they may lead to temporal closure of some of the banks. <clears throat> We need to mobilize the Federal Reserves to supply cash and create deposit insurance, thus helping banks regain the trust of the people and stop the bank runs. If we don't do this, the situation could spiral out of control and lead us to a capital shortage and further the economic recession. The Roosevelt administration. So it probably can't proceed. In one of the most awaited moments since the inauguration, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt has introduced the nation to the member of his administration, a group of talented men for who will change the United States for the better. Secretary of State Cordell Hull will manage America's stance on the international stage. An internationalist, Hull will lead America's efforts to step out and finally involve itself in world affairs as an advocate for liberty and democracy. In departure from U.S. interventionism in Latin America, he hopes to make America a good neighbor to Mexico and the South American countries. On the left of uh, will William Wooden, the Secretary of the Treasury, Wooden will be crucial in implementing the New Deal policy, removing the dollar from the gold standard to increase American economic independence and promote GDP growth. The new Secretary of the Interior, Harold L. Ikes, Ikes, will support Wooden's efforts. A man will probably be most responsible for achieving the New Deal's promises across America. A particular consequence as the Public Works Administration, an institution that will come to aid thousands and millions of Americans in search of a job and good pay. Other notable appointments include Homer Still Cummings as Attorney General, serving as the President's legal advisor and lawyer, uh, 
advisor and lawyer for the federal government. And James Farley is a postmaster general, head of the U.S. Postal Service. Together, these men will save America. That's a lot of political power. Also, we do have money and inflation in this in the game. So, um, let's see. Let's go up here. We got 76 total support. A lot of support of the Democratic Party. 90%, 45% from the Republicans, and 25% from the Socialist Party. Um, so there's that. We'll probably need to do that stuff later. We have, of course, improve market conditions. Uh, we could probably really use some more stability. I might do that one. Uh, war propaganda. Create public works. Injecting significant government funds into a national industrial, industrial base while the creation of a new factory area, area somewhere uh, within our borders. Not bad. We lose a lot of money, though, which we don't have. Which we don't have. It's your currency. A pretty money will take some time and will increase our inflation rate. But that would be an acceptable option to gain some desperately needed capital. Yeah. So, Emergency Banking Act. So, if you're about that, please go ahead. First step on the road to recovery. Nice. Weekly stability. Not bad. Provide affordable power. Help unemployment. Money goes down. Reduce agricultural surplus. Let's do this one first. Reduce agricultural surplus. Well, the FSCC deals with the surplus food at a higher level. A difficult issue must be attacked at the roots. The Agricultural Adjustment Act is designed to do just that. Once passed, it subsidizes farmers to not plant on certain sections of the land. Furthermore, the government will buy excess livestock in order to keep the price of cattle competitive. While we're hoping farmers will be able to rally in profit after the Depression ends, it's vital we make sure <clears throat> that overproduction does not halt in agricultural gains. As such, a disastrous economic collapse, after such a collapse, we must relearn to walk before we can run. <clears throat> Employment for the youth, afford, uh, provide affordable power. Even by Depression era standards, the Tennessee Valley of the southern states is in extremely dire economic conditions. Forests have burned each year uh, by fire, and the best timber has already been slashed and slapped. Depleted farms and fields have ruined the agricultural prospects, leading to some families having an annual income of less than $100. With malaria rates creeping in the low 30%, outside observations of third world settings are difficult to reject. Creating a federal corporation specifically for the valley will spur new economic opportunities. Rural electrification, large infrastructure projects, and promoting better cultivation cultivation methods will go a long way to empower the modernizing of the American South. <clears throat> Unemployment for the youth. The path of many nations is based upon the hopes and dreams of its youngest generations. With the economy shambles, unemployment is so high, our maturing young adults have a particularly bleak outlook for the future. Look at that. Therefore, we should uh, resolve to create a public works uh, relief program, already known as the Civilian Conservation Corps, or Triple C. It will ensure we can provide stable pay and good labor to those to work, uh, looking to work, while guaranteeing, look at that, uh, the conservation of America's sitting landscape and the development of our natural resources in rural areas. <clears throat> Alleviate household unemployment. Um. Alleviate household unemployment. Beyond the uh, unemployment situation, many who are already in the workforce have been humiliated by t layoffs and company restructures. Someone like the Triple C. Creating the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, the FARA, would provide a pathway for positions within the federal government. While it would be basic jobs in newly established public lands and facilities, the importance lies in self-esteem and psychological benefits of having a secure vocation to restoring trust in the American government. I should be doing anything with, this, with these guys' military staff. Uh, okay, so we have everyone here already. It's not bad, because everyone gets factories, that kind of sucks. Wait, so this... No, it's not. It's this guy. Wooden. Resource efficiency gain. Can we change him? Hey, that'd be, that guy's a lot better. Um, I just want to have a check. Because we're using this guy, and he's okay. Darn. I prefer this guy. Oh, I can't choose him, though. Darn it. Chief of the military? Plus 10 max attrition. Jesus Christ. MacArthur would be good, though. Um, this just gives you bonus. Oh, convoy production, but just only convoys. Oh, that's pretty good, too. Anything here, Clark is not bad. I uh, can't really change too much here, can we? No, I think we, because we're America, we can't really. Wow, four hundred! Holy cow! Economic policy, free market, social market, corporatism, mixed economy. Um, trade laws. We're in free trade. We'll take a look at that later. Acceptable taxation, over taxation, death and taxes, low taxation, minimal taxes. Standing army, increased spending. Oh, militia based. Get more defense. <clears throat> Recovery organization is, gets just killed. So, in the meantime, we also have the New Deal. Oh, uh, as the Great Depression persists. <clears throat> 
The state of the economy in our country worsens, but with our new president, FDR, hopefully things will start to change for the better. To kickstart the president's ambitious plans, the country he intends to use its first 100 days in office to pass new initiatives that will hopefully counter the effects of the crisis and generate some political momentum that will last for the next four years. If that, however, if however the president does enact programs that come that the most pressing issues in the country. His presence will be off to a rocky start that'll have some serious consequences on the ability to put forward and ratify his bold agenda for the future. So since we have the political power, I'm gonna go and do this one, because we could use more stability. Works progress administration. Okay. Harsh punishments. Ooh. Ah, this is for uh this is new technology trees as well, so I kinda split things up, so um please let me know if you have played this mod, Darkest Hour, because this is a couple the time this is recording this video is coming out a few days after it's been released. Let me know what you think of it. I, I, I'm very interested in reading what you guys think of this mod. Um, because, you know, I like getting your guys' opinion. So, lobby for support. It was money. Um, oops, that's pretty high. Do we need more, maybe? Yeah, we'll do it once. 76.5. And then invest in public works. The wealth of America is not just in our cities, her vast geography remains her biggest blessing. With hardships of the depression, many important civil construction projects have been shelved indefinitely. This has provided another opportunity for getting Americans back to work, including the National Industrial Recovery Act. The Public Works Administration will provide contracts to private construction companies to hire unemployed construction workers and begin creating these projects. Roads, schools, railways, hydroelectric dams, bridges, and airports are only a few of the potential proposals for the administration. More than wealth, however, could provide or prove a multiplier for the stagnant economy, raising the future prospects of the nation as a whole. Civil works. Protect the currency. So after this, it sh we should be a pass a hundred days mission. So we can start doing other stuff. And we need more war support and will tension. So I'll provide additional. We'll provide aid and relief. Abandon the gold standard. Oh, why would we do that? Ooh, there's a lot of political power. One point to reduce the fraudulent Wall Street activities. Yeah, let's do that one. Right now, the country, the sale of securities is regulated by the state laws, termed as big blue sky laws. These laws only allow for the offering and sale of securities on a purely merit or review basis. So making investment in new and upcoming businesses is very prohibitive. The federal government is in an attempt to create better disclosure for investors. Careful to the unethical practice prevalent in the market and to encourage investment by the public has decided to pass the Federal Securities Act. The laws part of the New Deal by the President will, in essence, allow uh, investments in all public campaigns as long as all necessary information is provided to the prospective investor. Uh, not bad. Blow the Suez Canal? Uh, I think we'll be okay. We're probably not going to do that. Look at the first 100 days done. Could grab these guys. But there's no real need to right now. I'll probably grab this guy, if anything. I'm going to take a while to do this one. Good neighbor. <laughs> In relief. Yeah, why not? Furthering the successful alphabet agencies of the New Deal, the Federal Surplus Commodities Corporation, despite its lengthy name, has a simple objective. Diverting excess agricultural products away from the open market and directly to starving Americans. It seems counterproductive, but at present, many consumer bulls are stagnating in the warehouses due to massive stock from farmers unable to sell at competitive rates or prices. Using the FSCC, we can use the federal money to purchase the extras and distribute them to families who desperately need them. Less waste, more haste. Hey, that's not bad. Oh, lobby for Democrat support. Lobby for Republican support. Oh, 95. Uh, 4th of July, it's kind of hard to read, but the spirit of 1776 lives in the heart of every American. Pro-Republican campaign. What influence the Republican Party gets? Well, we don't want the Republican Party for now, do we? No, probably not. What should we get right now? Well, you never know if we might need more support. Light tanks, what is this? Well, we're already down here. It's a little ahead of time. Super heavies, whoa. Screen ships? Border class. Uh, what is this? The sub. Uh, so I'll probably just start researching that one just to get that one done and over with. Light airframes. Carrier fighters. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, carrier fighters right there. Heavy fighters. Deck aircraft. Probably we'll need that one too. And heavy airborns. Medium bombers, heavy bombers, naval bombers. We definitely will need some naval bombers eventually. Uh, let's go with you. And I guess we're on base strike. Well, that's fine with me. I don't really care. So we have this page. So I'll support and support out. Uh, that's all we have here. Economy tab. So your weekly income is 90 bucks, basically, for taxes. Find a weekly balance. Social spending. Ooh, can we actually increase? Finding flight escape again. Oh, wow. Worked up on that. Um, we can increase the taxes, which gives us less political power. Quite a bit less. And it kind of hurts us quite a bit. We get more money, but we don't need more money. What do we do that one? Lower taxes. Get a slightly more political power. Get way less money, though. Social spending wise, we lose 7% political power and whatnot. Oh, we get plus 5% more. How much more would it cost? When we go this way, we lose more political power. Quite a bit more. Research and education spending. 
We lose political power right now. We boost it up, we get slightly more. Costs way more though. And that sucks. Uh, military spending. So right now, we are kind of neutral, relatively neutral. Uh, get more population here. Way less division organization. Cost per field of battalion. What I would like to see, if possible, um, it might be here, maybe not. Replace it. So if you hover over this, could you see? Um, how much it would actually cost before this? I kind of want to do that one. Because right now, we get 53 every 53. We're going to increase it by one level. I'd like to see, like, how much would it, in theory, cost to do that. So, uh, protect the currency. Let's do provide inner relief. Yes. Good neighbor. Time and time again, American leaders have American leaders have resorted to brute military force and interventionist policies to fulfill American interests, which have greatly damaged America's credibility in Latin American countries. President Roosevelt favors his purchases not interventionist policies in an effort to denounce past U.S. interventionism and subdue any subsequent fears of Latin Americans. The president has announced during his inaugural address to dedicate the nation to the policy of the good neighbor, the neighbor who respects himself and respects the rights of others. The neighbor respects his obligations and respects the sanctity of his agreements in and with the world of neighbors. This policy aims for friendly relations between the U.S. and Central as well as South American countries to foster ties and economic exchanges. It's creating new economic opportunities in the form of reciprocal trade agreements and, in a sense, restored the influence of the United States in Latin America in a friendly manner. Well, we'll see. Babe Ruth announces his retirement, huh? Happy September, everybody. 50%? Well, it's not bad, 81. Barely went up, but you know, you kind of expect that. 41% in the population, 87%. Well, a dire situation is floating across the globe. Current unemployment is 18%. Current unemployment impact, a lot. We're in total free fall? I thought we'd been there already. Well, not bad. Got some money. Sure, what else to do with that? So, let's see. Occupied territories, that's pretty normal. That's why this thing's up here, because we're running out of cars. We need more armored cars, because armored cars was what we're using. Blockhouses, huh? Uh, good neighbor. Oh, another one here? Yeah. Uh, let's do protect the currency. Despite the New Deal reforms aimed at combating the effects of the Great Depression in the country, the President decided to pass the Gold Reserve Act. With the passage of this act, the statute, uh, statutory price of gold will be increased, incentivizing ports of gold into the country, for, who, for whose accumulation the U.S. Department of Treasury will be responsible. The act, while encouraging gold miners all over the world to sell their gold in the U.S., will also devalue the dollar and hence reduce, or hence reduce infla deflation. The increase in gold reserves will lead to an increase of the money supply in the country, allowing for the counteracting of all the ill effects of the current economic turmoil by the administration. The good neighbor policy. Since Washington's final victory in Yorktown, we have been prevailing power in the new world. Countries come and go, but the American experiment is seen through strife, turmoil, and even civil war. While our fortune has been great and the nation has endured, fortune, unfortunately, our destiny has manifested in ways that founders could call tyrannical to. Previous administrations have led several military interventions into our Latin American neighbors, and at least eight different nations, some of those several times, expectedly trust in American values in our backyards at an all-time low. However, with FDR, they now the commander-in-chief, the new administration, and proposing a full reset on southern relations, calling it the good neighbor policy that president is prepared to withdraw the remaining military missions to Haiti and the normalization of relations with Mexico and Cuba. Seeing his inaugural address, Roosevelt proclaimed, I would dedicate this nation to the policy of the good neighbor, the neighbor who outly respects himself, and because he does so, respects the rights of others. This has also been stated by Secretary of State Holt, saying no country has the right to intervene in the internal and external affairs of another. This policy of non-interventionist or non-intervention includes lucrative trade deals for the Central American nations, hoping to add a level of trust to the new relationships. Our decades of interventions and bullying cannot be fixed with trades and speech. It would be a real test of administration's diplomacy to restore American standing in these nations. Should I bake a pie for newfound friends? Civil Works Administration. Uh, drink of the house. Oh, yeah, that's that one. Oh, the noble experience really bad. Oh, God. Uh, brought in to, brought in to prevent alcohol-related issues, as such as alcoholism and domestic violence from occurring, the prohibition of the production, importation, and transportation and sale of alcohol over the 18th Amendment has been effective in that regard, but it has invertedly caused other problems due to its ineffective and uneven enforcement. Laws resulted in increasing crimes made the general populace agitated and disgruntled, which is not something we want considering the circumstances our nation finds itself in. He could be for our country united in these trying times and acquire more support for government, which should make the obvious choice and repeal the amendment. Um, fighter bombers, I guess these are interceptors, which I don't, I don't really like interceptors too much. I mean, they, they have a use, don't get me wrong. But still, <clears throat> motorized 32, motorized 16. Where is it? There you go. Up here. North Carolina class. It's not bad. Just make a lot of convoys for now. I don't want to make any outdated ships yet. Not really. 
Too late. There you go. <clears throat> How is this? Look at neighbor. President FDR has made a promise to a lot of American countries uh, that, that the United States of America will be a good neighbor, that a shift in rhetoric is long overdue and meaningful action will be most appreciated. This has, however, put an expectation that these actions are taken as soon as possible. If we fail to accomplish certain objectives in a certain time frame, we'll just give these countries more reason to dislike us, further alienate ourselves among them. 12 from 80. And the Platt Agreement. Wants a video con convention. And bad neighbor. Oh, draw from Haiti. Well then. Sure, why not? We can do that again. As they see us running. Oh. Alright. <clears throat> Drinks on the house, because right now our national spirits are Atlanta 3. Aftermath of Black Thursday. Not good. Very bad. We have the Noble Experiment, which is not good. We have the Lochner era. And then the New Deal. Oh, are we missing somebody here? No, we have the political power. Can choose, wait, we can't choose you. Okay. Choose you? No. Oh, can't choose any of these guys. Protect currency. Well, you've been relegated to go home. Goodbye. Let's what's more. Jesus Christ. Actually, so we're trying to build up a lot of cities. So, we'll see. 83%? Sure, why not? I'm not sure what else we're supposed to do with that stuff. So, Raise food prices? Ooh. Boost public order's budget. I don't know which one we're supposed to do here. We lose stability. Um, or the... Value manipulation. Boost the public works budget. Uh, we'll get to that in just a little bit again. So, carrier fires. We don't need to do those ones in the middle. Um, Curtis. Striker. We don't have to do that one yet, because we can just wait to make carriers later. There's no point to make them right now. We'll need some heavy bombers eventually. And we'll need some naval bombers too. But this says it's ahead of time, but it's 1933. Go figure. Helicopters. It's a little ahead of time. <laughs> Industrial research. Which things have already been pretty much completed here, so that's why we've not gotten to this page yet. Engineering research wise. Um we're pretty much on top of everything here too, so. Let's go back to capital ships, maybe. Battle cruisers. I always like battle cruisers. Nothing there as well. Screen ships. We're kind of there as well. Heavy subs. Very long range. Well, we can do that too because we can. Why not? <clears throat> I think we already have enough support here. So, drinks in the house. We'll probably do boost the public works budget. As the global Great Depression continues, several new economic theories have emerged. <coughs> the most prominent of these is the school of Kenyan economics. As a seemingly counterintuitive idea that the best way to recover from our economic woes is to start spending. Keynesians, or as a kid, I always pronounce that word wrong, suggested that during recessions, the most important influence on economic output is demand, rather than supply. And the government could simulate a demand by spending money on public works projects. By investing large amounts of money into the infrastructure projects like new schools, roads, bridges, airports, hospitals, and dams, we can provide our nation's workers with steady jobs and decent pay. With the most basic needs taken care of, Americans will finally be able to spend again, putting customers back in the long shirted stores. <clears throat> Secretary of the Treasury, William H. Wooden, has resigned. Two men looked across a large maple desk at each other. Nearly a year of work have gone in and around that desk, all in an attempt to follow through on the promise to cure the ailments of the, uh, the nation was experiencing. On one side of the desk was Secretary of the Treasury, William H. Wooden, the quintessential image of uh, uh, an effective bureaucrat and businessman. When he first took office with the man across from him, the president, he was full of energy, optimism, and life. But over the course of the year, he's become weary and tired of it all. Mr. President, I, I am sad here today to give you this news, but I'm no, I feel, I am afraid. I no longer feel I am fit to execute my duties as your Secretary of the Treasury. I see what makes you believe this. Uh, the president expected something like this. He had seen Wooden's fading enthusiasm. I'm not a young man anymore, sir. My doctor's been telling me to slow down. I can feel it in my bones that they're all right. Science filled the room. You'll be leaving some big shoes to fill. The president pulled out a ladder and lit a fresh cigarette. Any ideas to fill? There's a multitude of men in your camp in my department I could recommend, but the best that comes to mind is the president's Henry Morgenthau Jr. You're familiar with him and his work already from his time in Albany with you, and he's done a good job on the Federal Farm Board. 
He's behind you on the new deal and is committed to keeping the operations as clean as possible. <clears throat> Good choice. I'll have to sleep on it, of course, but I think he's the man I'll put in. The president said, puffing smoke clouds towards the view of the Capitol. Well, then, if there's nothing else. <clears throat> I do have a few more duties to complete before I leave. It's been a pleasure, William. Well, I got rid of him. I have some consumer goods now, or construction goods. I guess there's more consumer goods, but it helps us with, but hurts our construction speed. Darn. Boost it. Uh, and the flat agreement? Sure, why not? I guess. Operations? No. We need the political power then. What's the point of PP? Look at this guy. Oh, wait, I can remove him. Oh, I can just remove him? Texas prison escape. I think I'm with this guy. Well, you know what? I'm not sure. I'd, let's just keep it the way it is for now. And then uh, maybe in the future, we'll, maybe I'll change it in the future. I'll, we'll see. Civil Works Administration. Many citizens have lost their jobs and are currently unemployed because of the Great Depression. The president's thought of this and intends to implement policies that over a period of time will bring back prosperity to the nation and its inhabitants. These policies are long in coming and implementation. The average citizen needs to work as soon as possible if he's in or survive these testing times. Or, as part of the New Deal being implemented nationwide, the president decreed the formation of the Civil Works Administration to generate short-term jobs for the most effective echelons of the society. CWA provides manual work to many by undertaking several public works and construction projects. Through a solution, it is suitable for long, short-term duration only. Instead, the nation requires long-term policies by the federal government to be able to fully ever eliminate mass unemployment. Okay. I got nothing to do except lobby for more support. You know what? We don't have enough Democratic support here. 95% is not good enough. 30. Oh. Why is it getting worse? Total income. Oh, consumer goods factories. We get money from consumer goods factories. Is there a long enough to share the wealth program? Ooh. Long is here to stay. Nice. Money, income. We're like, man, like no money now. Good God. Abandon the gold standard. <clears throat> We tend the dollar to gold. We're not giving ourselves the best chance possible to recover from the Great Depression. The gold standard forced the government to keep the interest rates high in order to protect the gold reserves. It was made it too expensive for people to borrow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the situation must be resolved immediately. Once we abandon the gold standard, then we'll be able to print more money and lower interest rates, which should hopefully stimulate the economy and bring us back on track. Hundred percent is not high enough. The Good Neighbor of Montevideo Convention. Look at that. A victory for the Monroe Doctrine. Oh, wait, why did I do that one? We already have 100%. My bad. I was just clicking on stuff. Alright, anything else here? Medium Bomber of 1933. Air Attack Aircraft 33. Medium Bomber. Uh, it's kind of hard to read, differentiate between all these. Attack aircraft 33. Carry base fighter. Fighter. It must be Cass. Ground attack 6. Well, I guess we'll put it on there too. Civilian trains and whatnot. On our way. Cool. What else do we have here? Oh, New York class is fine. Yeah, 33. I'm not interested in those, you know. How much money are we not making now? 37 is slightly better, but still. Oh, look at that. We're still confident in the banks. One of the primary reasons for the Great Depression was the widespread panic about the American banking system due to the fears of over the strength of the institutions. Bank runs set on demands by large numbers of customers to withdraw their funds at almost the same time, brought down many banking corporations as depositors attempted to withdraw more money than the bank had available. In order to win back the public's trust and encourage them to deposit their money, the federal government will be creating the Federal Deposit Insurance uh, Corporation. Although, <clears throat> the organization has many duties. Its prime objective will be to provide insurance to depositors in both commercial and savings banks. It will be aided by efforts by the U.S. Department of Treasury who will be providing a direct line of credit. So all that stuff is done. Tanks. You know what? Screw it. We're going to get that one done anyways because you can. Actually, you know what? Never mind. Not the Christie. M1. Good God. The M1. Go, 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 goes kaboom. Uh, let's see. What is this one? 
The road goes both ways. Our tariff rates are some of the among the highest in the world. Our protection policies are sure to have an effect on not only our global recovery from the Great Depression, but on our own as well. To counteract this, we must make a complete reversal and sign into law the Reciprocal Tariff Act. This bill will not only begin to liberalize our trade policy, but also allow the President himself to negotiate with foreign nations to reduce their tariffs in return for the reduction of our own tariffs. This will usher in a new age of trade and should play a part in stimulating the global recovery from this economic crisis we find ourselves in. And a body Clyde. Yay, bullet holes. Regulate the Securities Exchange. While the Federal Securities Act has been largely successful in promoting ethical practices, its main jurisdiction in the primary market, i.e. tailors only to the exchange between the company and the investor, the the secondary market, which involves third parties, free to continue to employ exploitative practices. In pursuit of the government's objective to promote a free and fair market, where individuals have always full disclosure by the companies they intend to invest in, the government will, federal government will enact the Federal Securities Exchange Act. This will act will finally allow the practice of disclosure to be extended to the secondary market. We have abandoned the gold standard. This afternoon, newly uh, elected President Roosevelt signed another landmark of a piece of executive legislation. Order 6102 now forbids the hoarding of gold coins, bullion, and gold certificates within the continental U.S., effectively taking the country off the gold standard. <clears throat> it's a monumental order, but one in lockstep with Roosevelt's first 100 days plan, carrying with it the hope that it pull the country out of the deepest or steepest depression in our history. Consumers have been hoarding gold since the stock market began to collapse. A nature of these hard times, while most can't be blamed for keeping their money close to the chest, it's only worse than economic spending and is devalued prices. By trading the gold for a, a currency amount, the order will give more liquidity to spenders. I also remove a constraint on the Federal Reserve, with demand notes requiring a 40% gold backing, raising the credit issuing ceiling and allowing more currency to be printed. Citizens will have until May 1st to bring in the gold deposits, where they will receive an exchange for banknotes for $20.67 per troy ounce. But it's so shiny! And now we have a demolition team, an M1 light tank, and the Wisconsin Progressive Party. Huh. Okay. And we did the reciprocal trade agreement, but now we can just... Do with Belgium, maybe. See what that's like. Um, okay, we have still a lot of unemployment, unfortunately. I'll ah, screw it, do it anyways, because you can. Just because you can. Oh, we can get all these different types. It's, of course, 1934, which we do want to make. Oh, I forgot about artillery in its entirety. Not good. Um, support companies, of course. I'm not sure if I'll actually use that one or even use that one. We'll see. Antibiotics, infantry stuff. This stuff is all ahead of time a little bit. So not too worried about this stuff. Oh, that's not good. Uh, support companies, and... Uh, still, let's get that. Mm, still there, huh? Nox. Battle cruiser. We're gonna keep waiting. Heavy bombers, huh? Medium bombers. Heavy bombers. Um, we have medium tanks on the line. Do we have light tanks? We might not, actually. Might be worth making some light tanks, too, eventually. More naval stuff? Sure, why not? <clears throat> By the time any sort of war starts, we'll have all this stuff done. Extra confidence in the banks. But the Blue Eagle campaign. Symbols can be more than just a representation. Much like flags under the right conditions, they can be a rallying point for the entire societies. <clears throat> A Blue Eagle is just one of those cases. Originally created to mobilize political support for the new department. It's displayed in factories and shops, but companies show compliance to support for the National Recovery Administration, provided to many employers, posters, letterheads, and many other items are promoting a return to the national pride and work. The Eagle is also an ad advertising effect, with many Americans only buying products that probably dis display the image on their labels. It's become a smashing success and another badge of American resolve and restoration of the nation. 1934 midterm term elections. Present more mo and then income modifier? Alright, well, that's alright. Two days left. <clears throat> and now we get 0.8 political power every day. Not great. Second new deal. President Roosevelt's new deal so far been an unmitigated success, as the most pressing issues are being dealt with, relief is being sent out to the people who need it the most, and unemployment is beginning to fall slowly. The president's work, however, is far from over until the end of his uh, second term. Uh, uh, end of his term. He'll attempt to reenact the second stage of his plans, a second new deal. Oh, look at that. The bills and policies that Roosevelt intends to pass will tackle issues that are rooted deep in society and create a strong foundation to build upon in the future. He will have to remain politically astute, however, as his political capital is not unlimited, and if he drops the ball, he could open himself up to a challenge from the Republicans in the next election. <coughs> so by doing all this stuff, I mean, it says we'll get more relations and stuff, which is nice and all. Oh, wow, we've got total support. Oh, look at this. Lock pen, social democracy. Um... It doesn't help us out that much, does it? I was name mind. Ninety nine percent of the seats in Congress. Holy crap. Wait. The Republican Party is ninety nine percent of the seats in Congress. The Democratic Party is ninety seven point five percent of the seats in Congress. Uh Okay. We could do this one too, but I want to save some money first. You never know if we have a 
crisis whenever. Wow, I have like no money right now. Jesus Christ. Income sucks. Well. Aftermath of the Black Thursday. And it's going to be here for a long time too anyways, but still. In the Lochner era. New regulations, so. Kind of sucks. We're trying to build as much as we can, as fast as we can, but still. And we have full, uh, full civil liberties, which I'm not sure I completely agree with. But you know what? It's just it's still in the still going on. So whatever. Can't do anything here yet either. We need more war support, which we have none still. But whatever. Uh, expand the youth program. Improve <coughs> the nation's infrastructure. I like that one a lot. Uh, electrify the countryside. Sell the dust bowl families. Uh, electrify the countryside. Long neglected by the electrical corporations, the majority of the nation's countryside does not have access to electricity. Not long to be economically infeasible. The nation's farm homes are not part of any major electrical grids, but the usage of a 7200 volt distribution network can make transmission much easier in the long distances involved in the countryside. The President of the Congress will be signing the Executive Order 7037, which would create the Rural Electrification Administration. Funding will be channeled through our cooperative electric power companies. These members own cooperatives will purchase power on a wholesale basis and distribute it using their own network of transmissions and distribution lines. What's going to do? Get more political power? I mean, that's nice and all. Here, Honduras, why not? Because I don't want to lose all that money for one city. Inflation is be not good. To get more money, but is that worth it? We don't really need more money-ish. Well, we will eventually, because we're making like no money now. God dang it. Um, that sucks. Oh, we're Bradley, huh? It's best to wait for this one. Eyes now, of course. Is he really looking that old when he was that? Like, next planning. Good max. Get our plan. That's nice. Max also shells. Happy 935, everybody. Uh, what do we have for 35? I really don't know. Like I said, I'm new to this one, so. 36. Probably not going to be using that too much. 35. Ah. That says ahead, so ahead of time. Well, I guess we'll get the one that's not ahead of time then. Oh. Requires technology. Okay. 36. Ships. Three. Engineering. Three six. Still had time. Oh, look at that. Nice. Eh, factory controllers, why not? Second new deal. The countryside, more naval stuff, yes please. There's only one naval tree, not bad. And then what? Uh occur to unfair labor practices. In 1932, Senator Hugo Black proposed an act to curb unfair labor practice and to provide rights to the average American worker. The current administration, as part of the New Deal, has heavily revised Senator Black's initial draft to pass the Fair Labor Standards Act. The revised proposal law for an 8-hour work day and a 40-hour work week, and workers will earn wages for an extra 4 hours of overtime. Along with this, a minimum wage will be established and overtime must pay must be 1.5 times regular pay. Children under 18 will be denied from working in dangerous conditions, and children under 16 cannot work in the manufacturing or mining industries or during school hours. This act was received with a great deal of support from the president himself, meaning it could pass without issue. <coughs> For now. Brazil. Great Depression. We are 23%. Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Well, so 80% Republican support? Why not? Only 10. My gosh. Federal Art Project. Aid the Elderly. God, we just have no money. Prevent another bonus army. Resettle decimal families. A series of severe dust storms have severely and greatly damaged ecology and agriculture of the American and Canadian prairies. They've caused severe drought and failure of the dryland farming methods to prevent the wind erosion, with the unanchored soil turning into dust, which the prevailing winds blew away in huge clouds that blackened the day, forming massive choking bills of dust. Thousands of stricken and afflicted families are in need of immediate help. Ruxford Tugwell, an advisor of the president, has been tasked with heading the Earth Settlement Administration. Among his duties, his primary goal would be to relocate the struggling rural and urban families. A massive undertaking, the government plans to resettle, resettle destitute families from agriculturally exhausted, worn out land of green belt cities, which would act as models for a cooperative agricultural future. Tragedy in Rockville. Oh. Hmm. I'm getting a little nervous about that. Coal cattle pact assigned. Support American artisans. In times, of, in, in times of need, the artist, no less than the manual worker, is entitled to, um, to employment as an artist uh, at the public expense. The arts, no less than business, agriculture, and labor, are and should be the immediate concern of the ideal commonwealth. Federal Project Number 1, also referred to as Federal 1, is the collective name for a group of planned projects under the Works of Progress Administration, a New Deal program in the U.S. 
HE's works or projects will cater the needs of each of their respective art categories to prevent undue federal influence on artisans and their works. All projects will operate without discrimination regarding race, creed, color, religion, or political affiliation. Well, I guess we'll get some from stuff from France. With the whole economy tab, where's the uh, weekly expenses and stuff like that? But like tariffs, where's tariffs? You can take a loan. Oh God, inflation is zero percent. Wish I could say that for today. Radar, that stuff. Why are you doing really well on everything? Because we don't make any rubber, which sucks. But whatever. That's I mean, This is where they have the most uh, infrastructure right now. So. Miles will build it where he got the best of it. 23rd of May? What is over here? Upper working conditions? More stability? Why not? Oops. There you go. And then what? An action neutrality. A defense against aggression. I don't think this is the. I'm pretty sure this is not a historical one. So we're going to go with an action neutrality. Long-standing view and the conviction of many Americans is that the U.S. entry into the Great War has been orchestrated by bankers in the arms industry for profit and reasons. This and other factors strengthen the position of isolationists and non-interventionists considerably in the government. While the President himself is opposed to neutral policies, believing that they would restrict America's ability to help friendly nations, and even though it can technically veto to prevent such a policy from coming into effect, right now the domestic situations are so far flung that the President cannot afford to lose any of the congressional support, lest he be unable to fully implement all the New Deal legislation and reforms he intends to carry out in the country. Due to his own reasons regarding the political front and the general populace's support for isolationism, the President will be signing the Neutrality Act, which effectively officiates America's isolationist and not interventionist stance. Infantry kits. Ahead of time. It says it's ahead of time. We generally, not always, but generally don't want to do things too ahead of time. Everything here is ahead of time. Okay then. Federal Art, Music, Theater, Writer, Historical Record Survey, and Project. Through the infrastructure. Money, Income, no. Well, 85% is not bad. God, three plus three, good God. Um, yeah, and we got also contain unfair labor practices, which I read earlier, of course, but whatever. How are we looking? 10, is that it? Good God. Not good. <clears throat> oh, the Anton's red. Of course, the economy is international as well. There's some guy here. How are they doing in Germany? Oh, some some Rudolph guy. Stanley Baldwin. Gaston Domargo. Yugoslavia. Hmm. Innovative revival. Members of industry, oh god. The May coup. Depression. How's uh, Spain looking? This guy's pretty happy. How's Italy doing? Yeah, they're doing. Overfunded Regia Marina. Okay, interesting. Birthplace of fascism. And they're slightly depressed. But they're Italian, so what do you expect? And now we're losing money, god dang it. Just get as much um, <clears throat> naval XP, complete the naval doctrine, and then just delete the navy. Expand these programs. As the Great Depression continued to grip the American economy, unemployment and poverty expired at record highs. These debilitating years have seen youth unemployment and tides rise to 30% as the younger cohorts of the U.S. increasingly face a devastation not being able to afford education. The New Deal needs to focus on the youth of our generation as well, or we may very well lose an entire generation if no action is taken. By Executive Order 7086, a new federal agency will be formed, the National Youth Administration, which will provide grants to youth in exchange for part-time work positions in various sectors of the education system along with vocational programs and occupational placements and a wide variety of fields, including recreation, public service, education, the arts, research and development, agriculture and construction. The youth of the future of the nation, and other guidance of the National Youth Administration that will ensure a bright future for America. Yeah, well. We always say we want to make sure the youth does okay, but what if they can't afford houses? You know, whatever. Just thoughts. These tanks suck too. Six combat width. Good God. Organization seven and a half. Good God. Ooh. 
Yeah, I'm not allowed to send volunteers. God dang it. We're not allowed to, though. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Scenes of slavery. Lion of Africa. Illiteracy problem. Free industrial society, good God. Solomon Dynasty. Well, if you want to read about National Labor Relations Act, please go right ahead. Yes. Workers everywhere rejoice. Yeah, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Oh God, it's getting worse. Aid the elderly. So you have even less money. We are the only modern industrialized country that doesn't possess a national system of social security. A large majority of our elderly population is drowning in poverty and unemployment or unemployed are living on the streets. This image of apathy is not something we want to project to the world, and certainly not to our own people, so something has to change. There recently has been a call for direct payments by the government to, to those who need them, providing the momentum that we need to erect a major pill in the social welfare foundation they were trying to construct. Really Puerto Rico. Federal Petroleum Board. Yeah, not good. Ah, nothing like running a deficit. I think we're pretty good. 95%, that's pretty darn good, but we'll do it anyways because we can. So hopefully our tiller is going to get a big old plus everything here. Experimental research. Thirty nine. Atomic research, huh? It's almost 36 anyways, but still. Yeah, do that one because you can. Sure, why not? Nice PP. Yeah. Oh, well, they're doing okay-ish. <clears throat> Standard long shot. <gasps> no. God, don't let me die. I have so much to do. No. Not even long. Sad day in America. Oh, light tanks here. Uh, relief Puerto Rico. Improve the nation's infrastructure. The quality of the infrastructure of the country is inadequate at supporting the current society. And this is no secret. And with unemployment so high, we still have a golden opportunity to hit two birds with one stone. The stone question will be the work projects administration. What are the president's new DLI agencies? The WPA will provide paid employment to millions of unskilled laborers. We will then carry out a wide range of public works projects across the nation, relieving our derelict infrastructure. Not bad. Mineral discovery. We're being so close to 936, I think we just get started with doing some of this stuff. Enforce rate, any of the armor trains here. Go ahead, why not? Not bad in terms of cities. Of course, it could be better, but still, whatever. Next election will be 36. So, how's, uh. Wow. What is this? Oh, see, see. Oh, move capital. Claim state. Return core state. Seize land for industry. Resource rights. Huh. Anglo-German naval agreement. Look at that. <clears throat> we can claim state. <clears throat> that would not be very historical, but you know what? You can, though. Southern Ontario's rival American territory. We just have to prove that we have a claim on it to justify war goal. That's interesting. I like that. But, threat big corporations. America was characterized as a land of opportunity where the poor soul from Europe could strike out a fortune with the sheer hard work. Right now, the nation is mired by unprecedented economic crisis, likes of which the world has never seen before. Millions are unemployed, many are starving every day, but the big companies in their lofty offices in Chicago, New York, and other metropolitan areas continue to wean off the poor they, they hoard. They withhold the salary checks. They have workers without any due warning. They have become the dark side of the opportunities of America, exploiting the populace in the midst of the hardships they face. The companies need to be reminded of their duty to the nation which has supported them. Now is their time to repay in kind. <coughs> We're just going to piss off conservative pisses, men, but you know, whatever, for now. It's all right, we're not making any money, we're running a deficit. What else is new? We're America. That's how we live. Oh, this has been...
Anti-Japanese Allied Army. A lot of resistance here, dude. Oh, it's an economic aid. Interesting. Shandong, good god. What did you do here, China? They don't have unique focus trees, so. Which is actually kind of nice for some nations not to have them. Just because I can make things very laggy. So, for now, I'm okay with that. <clears throat> oh, and the Rhineland has been remilitarized. Happy 1936, everybody. Federal Petroleum Board. America's blessed with many things, and among the treasures of its land is the black gold underneath. But, in recent times, the price of oil has fallen dramatically, causing some serious damage to the petroleum industry. The Connolly Hot Oil Act, named after Senator Tom Connolly, will be reenacted to, or be enacted to protect the industry from contraband oil, cartelizing the industry to stabilize the falling prices of oil. Along with this objective, take grant the President authority to prohibit the transportation of petroleum that is produced for or withdrawn from storage in excess of the amount permitted by the necessary federal authorities. Though this act may be viewed as excessive, it's a necessary step to safeguard America's petroleum industry. <clears throat> industry, we're already there. Okay, cool. Uh, over here, radar, yeah, why not? You. I'm not sure what else to grab. Nothing else. Okay, then. Oopsie. Oh, that sucks. German American Boone found in New York. Yeah, let's get the schnitzel. No, I think that's what's worth to get it. Not bad. Good God, that's not good. At losing money. Losing money. <coughs> Prevent another bonus army. A land and boom. Two hundred breaks on the southwest. Served a business out may outrage. In the midst of the Great Depression, tension drawn high between corporations. The government and those working underneath such machinations of entrepreneurship. Large businesses shoulder the brunt of the blame for the depression's initial effects, failing to provide for their employees, and thus causing millions of young men and women to go unemployed. Indeed, the nation's economics are in such a constant state of turmoil, only compounded by class tensions. Such an instance of this has been constantly over the past few years. Certain influential businessmen have expressed outrage over the current political state of affairs, seeing that the New Deal unjustly targets large businesses with underhanded means, such as antitrust laws or special progressive taxes. Although angered, it's so unlikely they'll be able to manage such much except disrupting the economic stability further than previously thought possible. But it seems as though all are suffering. Uh, divert all possible, send a out. Divert all possible resources, that's fine for now. We can buy some boats that way. Boulder Dam project begins. Impressive. Relieve Puerto Rico. <clears throat> Puerto Rico, since it's incorporation in the country, has always been neglected. Its economy is heavily tied and dependent on the mainland through a series of economic arrangements that heavily favor U.S. companies who hold monopoly over the cash, whole cash crop sector. Even before the Great Depression, negative developments in the island world economies uh, perpetuated an unsustainable cycle of subsistence for many Puerto Rican workers. Generally, the living standards are very low and dangerous working and living conditions cause high mortality rates due to workplace accidents and diseases such as dysentery, diarrhea, malaria, and tuberculosis. Developing fixed sorry state of affairs on the island, the Puerto Rico Reconstruction Authority has been created, following the security or authority of the Department of the Interior and the Farm Security Administration. Its primary goals will be to establish long-term economic stability in Puerto Rico through job creation, land distribution, public works projects, as well as environmental and health initiatives. The task of developing Puerto Rico may be an arduous one, but one that is necessary and critical for national development. There we go. M1 Grands. What do we got here? Oh, armored trains? Yeah, that's fine. Do we ever make any, any city trains? Um... No, not really. Soviet flag prank. Huh. Okay. The depression is only 26% of the people are unemployed. That's all. Just 26%. That's okay. And then we'll introduce wealth tax. <clears throat> The Great Depression has affected the permit and permeated throughout all sections of American society, from the top to the bottom of the hierarchy. But while the high society still has many of its comforts, the middle and lower echelons have been pushed to the brink of destitution and desolation. The Revenue Act aims to soak the rich, penalize bigness, and help balance the budget by raising federal income tax on higher income levels. By introducing the wealth tax, incomes over a million dollars per year will be liable to pay. There's strong opposition from businesses, the rich, and the conservatives from both parties about such a measure, but America needs to recover. And recovery needs every section of the society to do its part, the sacrifices must be made. And there goes Ethiopia. Didn't really have a chance. Good job, Benito. Oh, oh, you're back. So he just took Ogaden? Is that it? Maybe this one too? Why is so much resistance? Will we go back to war later? Oh no, you're in a puppet now. Okay. 36th Republican National Convention. With FDR's victory in the late 32 election and the end of the 
the Republican Party's 16 year hold in the White House, the situation the country finds itself in seems to have improved. Roosevelt has unified the Democratic Party behind him, and the Republican Party must do the same if they to occupy the Oval Office once more. In this year's GOP National Convention, there were initially three elected candidates, but as one named Senator William Bohr is fading, the race is now between two men. First between the two men, Al Governor Alf Landon of Kansas is a wealthy businessman and centrist. He's not only the most likely to win the nomination, but also has the greatest chance of defeating Roosevelt in the election, as, as he's not advocating for the abandonment of the New Deal program that is providing a relief to the economy. The second man is someone that the people of America know well, the now former president, Herbert Hoover. The for the nomination are thin, with a significant political connection. It isn't impossible for him to leech a, so, support a smaller candidate and surpass Landon. Whether the Republican nominee will be responsible with ensuring the party's dominance in the future, but if they fail, Roosevelt and the Democratic Party will surely capitalize on that error and cement their position in American politics for years to come. Experience beats everything. Hoover has beaten Landon. Alf Landon's the best shot. Well, they have to go with Landon for now. <clears throat> and though we're not even going to go with him, so. Why would you want to be a supposed centrist? What did they say? Deeds, not of something. Deficits. Why would you want to be a centrist? It's much fun, more fun to be a radical. Marines. Ah, no money. Really, Puerto Rico. 36th National Democratic Convention. There's no question. The past three years under the Roosevelt administration proven prosperous. Uh, even in the harsh reality of Colombia finds herself in. Whatever failures Hoover achieved through his reliance on the invisible hand began to get rectified. The mistakes he made were nothing in comparison to the success the New Deal has brought to the poverty-stricken landscape. But it's... Uh, but, but, but unemployment keeps getting worse. No challenger could even dare battle the president for the nomination. And FDR vows to go even further, and it's an acceptance speech. Roosevelt spoke to everyday workers, those in the ground the Great Depression hurt the most. He spoke to their hearts, guaranteeing that he would fight for them. Not the corporations or banks that lower the workers' heads and diminish their pride, but the workers themselves, who will soon be able to stand upright and live in and for a country that cherishes them. But the inner thoughts of the nominee held something different. Roosevelt knew he needed to change his approach. He knew the New Deal was not all it's cracked up to be. But Mr. Roosevelt would have time to think about it over. He didn't need a campaign, and the Republican candidate had never surpassed the love the people felt for him. Four more years. <clears throat> Puerto Rican relief. A combination of devastating hurricanes, unsustainable economic practices, and the Great Depression has left the people of Puerto Rico in constant poverty and that is the poorest piece of land in America. Acquired just over 30 years ago, Puerto Rico has never been a particularly prosperous territory, but with its rather large population, we cannot simply ignore the tumultuous situation. Even before the disastrous 20s, the island territories faced nearly unlivable conditions, with the primary exports being controlled by the ol oligopolies and tycoons unwilling to pay wages to the Puerto Ricans working in the plantations. This is compounded by the fact that the sugar industry was hit particularly hard by the Great Depression with fewer and fewer people having disposable income to purchase sugar products. All in all, the situation for Puerto Rico is dire. We must establish an alphabet agency to deal with it. <clears throat> the Puerto Rican Reconstruction Administration will divert government resources into a building of the island to ensure long-term economic stability and conditions are suitable for Americans. This, this time, sure to save them. And we'll end with our veteran of the Bonus Army. The Bonus Army was a group of demonstrators made up of 17,000 veterans, together with the families and affiliated groups. <coughs> who gathered in Washington, D.C. in mid-1932 to demand early cash redemption of the service certificates, which could not be redeemed until 1948. The media referred to them as the Bonus Army or the Bonus Marchers. Many of the war veterans had been out of work since the beginning of the Great Depression. Eventually, on the orders of then-President Herbert Hoover, the demonstration was clearly was driven out by uh, General MacArthur. As the Depression has continued, there is every possibility that such an incident will happen again. Despite the President's protests, the Congress decided to pass the Adjusted Compensation Payment Act to compensate the war veterans early. Veterans will be issued the U.S. Treasury bonds as a form of economic stimulus and relief as it is estimated that many bonds will be cashed in properly and constitute an efficient economic stimulus since little government administration is needed. The monies will be likely spent without delay, and the entire process does not require the long time lead of a public works program. Specialized skills or whatever it was? Huh. 36. We'll do that one because I like that one probably the most. And we'll go probably go to the third deal. Uh, President Roosevelt's first term policies and legislation were dominated by the promises of a new deal for the American people. True to his nature, Roosevelt followed through on his words, passing into law effective bills and proposals in the first and second New Deals. Now this demanded a renewal and the American people's absolute confidence. The third New Deal is well on its way. More liberal in substance than the past two, this third stage of legislation will prove to be more difficult to enact into law, but hopefully well worth the fight. We'll get there. Total support of at least 50% of Congress. Yeah, currently 100%. That's what I thought. Yeah, Americans help us out. Or Americans, Republicans, whatever. Yeah, help us out. Good God. Minus 37. Oh man. Oh god. Oh wow. Whoa! Why is the Spanish state doing so poorly right now? Because you don't have any support from. Oh. This is weird. Well, it is what it is, I guess, but still. It's hard to tell what has been upgraded or what has been improved and what has not. 
And then we have what? Berlin or Joyce? 36 fighter. Something actually slightly more uh, usable. Cool. But I think we'll end the episode there. We have like no manpower. We literally have no wars. But our economy is imploding. Still, even worse than what FDR found it. Yeah, but at least Americans' confidence in uh, the government is at an all-time high. Or probably higher. Our national brigade department. Off the go to fight Franco and the, his dudes, King Lear. Let the radicals leave America. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. All we got to was 1936. But I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also have more fun with a third new deal. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.